Dr. Bart Hodgins here to help you with your disc complaint. You may have been recently diagnosed with a herniated disc, a degenerative disc, uh, extruding disc. There's a large variety of different diagnoses you might have. If you have an MRI report at home, you can read down there and see what disc complaint you specifically have. For this, I'm going to walk you through some quick anatomy and then how we treat that here. This is bone, disc, bone. So when people talk about a herniated disc or having a disc problem, they're talking about this area right here. However, if I flip this over this way, where the nerves are, and that disc begins to squeeze out, I could potentially pinch a nerve. Wherever this nerve goes, you're now gonna start seeing some symptoms. Most commonly, you would have radiating pain. It might be only in the back, but it could also go down a leg. You might find the leg is partially weak with certain movements like lifting up your foot or pushing your foot down. That all depends on what level the disc injury is at. If you look here, you can see the blue. That's the middle part of the disc. That's where all the jelly is. That jelly is supposed to be contained here However, if it breaks through the outer ring, that is now when we start seeing a herniation, a disc herniation in this case here. So again, the blue material here getting pushed back, hitting the nerve, and then wherever that nerve goes, you're going to start to see some symptoms. So there's a lot of different ways to treat this. Not everything works for everyone, but what I like to do in my office, and we've had great success with this, is spinal decompression. That's this table right here. So what this table does, I'm going to walk you through it. We lift them up here. This harness system is for the lower back and this is for the mid back. In another video, we'll actually have someone on here, but it's, it's nice to see it without anybody on here. Once they're on here, we hook this harness system up. That then attaches to this here. And then I set the parameters on whatever's happening in the body that will help with the disc, okay? So for example, we might have to elevate this piece up here. We might have to elevate the top piece or vice versa. We might have to bring it down. We can also lift the legs up here and then finally we can unlock the table here. So the big pieces of decompression, right, are gonna be angle, poundage, position, and how much you allow the entire table to travel. So if you've been diagnosed with a herniated disc or any type of disc complaint, it's a really great idea to try to see if you can help it conservatively first, because we do know if these things get out of control, you get closer and closer and closer to needing surgery. So I, help, I hope that helps give you a brief explanation of what decompression is on how it can help a disc injury. Okay, so we currently have a patient on here. And right now we're working on the lower part of his back. This is a common setup for an L5 injury. And if we come down here, I have the table still all locked, but I'm gonna come over to the actual mechanical component. And now I'm starting to load poundage up. At the very beginning, the harness system is really still loose and we're taking the slack out and we're just making sure that the patient's comfortable in here and that they're able to tolerate the treatment. So as the poundage goes up, you can hear some of the squeaks that's just taking some of the slack out of the harnesses, okay? And you'll start seeing the numbers come up here. This is low number. That gives me an indication of the poundage and how rapidly it's moving up. Once we get enough of the slack out, I can then unlock the table and you heard that click. So from here, really right about here, all the way down, this is now floating on a roller system. And that's how we can control the distance and how much pressure the patient is getting at any given time. Okay, so now he's locked in and you're gonna hear some clicks. That's just the machine doing its work, keeping the poundage at 86 pounds and we're allowing the table now to travel. We can also do this face down, and depending on the diagnosis and the type of herniation that you may have been diagnosed with, you may need to go face down. Most people prefer face up uh, because it's more comfortable and it's a little bit 
easier to breathe. However, uh, face down is mandatory if someone can't lie face up. And also face down can also be beneficial to use gravity assistance, depending again on the diagnosis.